sets A and B. Uh, what is a function from A uh, from A to B? So you the notation used is a function A arrow B, right? F colon A arrow B, right? So a function is a rule that associates every element of A with a unique element of B, right? So this is uh, so this is a rule that associates every element of A with a unique element of B. So that there are two key words here, every and unique, okay. So when you, so when you take an element of A, for every element of A, there is a unique element of B associated with it, okay. So if you take an element X in A, then there is a unique element of B, F of X, that is associated with it. So there cannot be more than one, right, this unique uh, element. Also, this every element of A, right, which means that you cannot leave out anything. Everything in A must have a corresponding element here, correct. So that is the definition of a function, okay. So in this notation, so the terminology used is that this point here f of x is the image of this element x under this function and you say that x is the pre-image of this element under this uh, function, okay. These are terminologies that are commonly used. Also, uh, the set A is called, called what? Domain, right. So the set A is called the domain and set B is called the codomain, okay. So, uh, so there is some difference in terminology here. Uh, some people call it the range, okay. Uh, there is some inconsistencies in terminology, but we will call the set B uh, the codomain and we will reserve the term range for a related but slightly different concept, okay. So remember I told you that for the rule associates every element of A with a unique element of B, but you could have elements in B which are not covered, right, which may not be images of any particular element here. See, you cannot afford to miss out anything here, right, because it says every element of A has to be mapped. But some elements here may not be mapped, may not be Im images of anything here, right. So it is possible for example that only some of these guys are mapped and some of these guys may not be mapped, right. So uh, the word range is used to describe only those values, uh, sorry not values, the elements of B which are actually taken as functional, uh, th which the function actually takes as values, okay. Uh, so we will define the range R of the function as the set, so the set of all Y uh, in B such that uh, there exists X in A for which f of x equal to y, okay. So we do not call set B the range, we call set B the codomain and range is the subset of the codomain consisting of those elements which are, which are actually taken by the function, right. So the codomain may have certain elements which are not in the range and those elements are never taken by the function right, those, uh, so essentially they are left out by the function so to speak, okay. You cannot leave out anything here but you can leave out some elements here, is this clear? That is just a matter of terminology, okay. Some people say in the context where it does not really matter, some people call this the range, right, so the whole thing the codomain is called the range but I think in this situation I think it is useful to distinguish the codomain and the range, okay. So that is, uh, any questions on this? So that is a function.
from A to B, okay. Uh, and remember that you cannot have, so you can have uh, multiple elements mapping to the same thing that is allowed, but you cannot have one element mapping to multiple things that is not allowed, all right. Now there are, uh, there are a few more uh, specific kinds of functions which will also be of interest to us. Um, so remember I told you there could be multiple elements here mapping to the same element here for a function. Uh, so a function for which that does not happen, which uh, so a function for which uh, for every point in the range there is a unique pre-image is called a one to one function or a injective function, right. So, if I, so we will say the injective function. Injective function. I think you know all this. So, every element in R has a unique pre image in A, okay. And similarly, a surjective function. A surjective function is a, or a non two function is a function for which the domain, the co domain and the range are the same. In other words, the surjective function does not leave out anything in here, right. So, no function can leave out anything here, but you can leave out elements here. So, a function that does not leave out elements in the core domain is called a surjective function, okay. So, a surjective function of R equals B, that is all there is to it, right. That is a surjective function. And a function which is both injective and surjective, surjective is called a bijective function, okay. So, uh, if it is both uh, bijective function is uh, a function which is both, which is both surjective and injective. Okay. So, for a bijective function, you will have so every uh, the codomain coincides with the range, and every element in the range has a unique pre image. And you can argue very easily that a bijective function, uh, the inverse map is also a valid function, right? Because you do not leave out for the inverse map, you do not leave out anything here because it is surjective, right? And you do not have the problem of uh, multiple values, right? Going back. So, it is it turns out that the inverse mapping is also a function. So, sometimes bijective functions are called invertible functions, okay. Now, uh, the reason I am beginning with an introduction to these is because it plays a very important role in the topic of today's study which is cardinality, okay. So, in plain English cardinality of a set uh, simply refers to the size of the set, the number of elements in the set. Okay, so uh, it, if you are given a finite set, it simply enumerates the number of elements in the set, right? If this the classroom is the set, the cardinality will be the number of students in it. Okay. Now, so this this topic of cardinality, we are interested in comparing sizes of different sets. Okay, so if you were to give, if you are given two finite sets, let us say this class and some other class. And if you are interested in determining if these two sets are of the same size or if one is bigger than the other, what would you do? You would simply say, okay, this class has 35 students, another class has 30 students. So, this is bigger or they are equal or whatever, right. You can simply count it out and say one class is bigger than the other or they are equal in size. Now, the problem here, so this is fine as long as the sets are finite, all right. So, if you go on to infinite sets, this kind, this approach breaks down. So, if I give you two infinite sets with uh, sets with infinitely many elements in them, they are both infinite, right. How do you say one is bigger than the other, right. So, this approach breaks down, right. So, if I give you for example, the natural numbers which are which is obviously an infinite set and let us say rational numbers which is also an infinite set, then you cannot easily say that 
Well, you cannot, I mean they are both infinite, how do you say one is, they are same size or one is bigger than the other, right, you cannot, right, with this particular approach. So, so to, to find a way out of this, uh, a mathematician by name Cantor uh, decided that using the concept of bijective functions, you can actually compare the sizes of <laughs> infinite sets also, okay. So, to, let me explain very simply. So, if you were to find, let us say this is this class, and there is another class with same number of students, right, then I can find a bijection between the two classes, right. So, with every person here, I can I'll associate a unique element there and vice versa, even, right. So, even for finite sets, you, you are able to understand that two sets are equal in cardinality if there is a bijection between the two sets. Right, that is it is like a 1 to 1 and on 2 map, correct. Now, this concept concept extends to infinite sets also, okay. So, what Cantor defined is two sets not necessarily finite, finite or infinite, two sets A and B have the same cardinality if you can find a bijection between the sets A and B, okay. So, that is the definition, okay. So, let us, uh, let us get into this cardinality. Definition, sets A and B are said to be equicardinal, equicardinal means same cardinality, okay, equicardinal uh, notation if there exists a bijection f from a to b. Okay, if some bijection exists between a and b, they are said to be equicardinal. This is the definition, okay. This is the definition of the term equicardinal. Is that clear? This is the definition. And the related definitions, I will just put down two related definitions. So, B has a cardinality greater than that of A if there exists an injective function from A to B, right. So, if you can put the elements of A to A and B in a 1 to 1 and on 2 map, then they are said to be equicardinal. So, if, you, if it so happens that you can find an injective function from A to B, so, remember what does an injective function? Uh, so, you do not have multiple things mapping to the same same uh, value in the range, right. So, in that case, this means that the set uh, B has at least as many elements as A, probably more or equal, right, at least as many, right. So, this is a similar one, right, this is for injective function, okay. Uh, here the notation is cardinality of uh, B bigger than or equal to. So, if I put two vertical lines, it is called it is cardinality, okay. Remember, I did not tell you what the cardinality itself is, right. I am only comparing cardinalities, right. I am not saying that the cardinality is this, right, as in the case of finite sets, right. But I am just saying that one is bigger than the other in this sense, okay. Sorry, uh, cardinality greater than or equal to, yeah, uh, yes, so greater than or equal to, correct. Okay, 
And finally, so finally I want to define uh, what uh, the case where uh, B has a cardinality strictly, strictly bigger than A. Okay, so when do you say one element, one set has strictly more elements than another? Ha, huh, you can find an injective function, but there is no bijective function, right? So you can find an injective function. So this is true, but they are not equal cardinal, right? So you say, uh, so you say, so in here the notation is, um, so you can write this in words, uh, in just like above. So you say cardinality B is strictly bigger than the cardinality of A if um, there exists an injection or injective function, injective function f from A to B, but A and B are not equicardinal. Right, so there exists a bijective fun injective function from A to B, but there, there is no bijective function, which means they are not equally equicardinal. Okay. So this is how you compare sets for cardinality, even infinite sets. Okay, this gives you a framework to compare the sizes of even infinitely infinite sets with infinitely many elements. Okay. So now, we will see that just as I mentioned now, uh, sets that have infinite elements uh, can also be of different sizes in this sense, okay. So infinity, so in some sense all, not all infinities are born equal, okay. There are bigger infinities and smaller infinities in terms of cardinality, okay. It sounds a bit strange to begin with, but that is actually true as we will see according to these definitions, okay. So in fact, we can see there are examples of uh, infinite sets where one infinity is strictly bigger than the other infinity. For example, we will see that both natural both natural numbers and real numbers are both infinite sets, but the infinity of the real numbers is actually a bigger infinity than the infinity of natural numbers. Okay, and there are sets which are even bigger infinities than real numbers. Okay, so this is a little uh, hard to digest to begin with. But we will we will we will understand it very soon. Once you have these definitions clear, it's actually fairly easy to understand these concepts. Okay. So now I want to define countability, the concept of countability. They still need not be equal, right? No. Yes. That's by definition they are considered equicardinal. So if you if you find a bijection between two sets, the sets are defined to be equicardinal. Okay. That's the definition. I am not saying that the sets are equal, obviously the A and B may not be the same set, see what I mean. I am just saying that the cardinalities are equal, right. So by definition the sets are equicardinal if there exists a bijection between them. Even if you find one bijection it is enough, okay, okay.